Hello viewers and fans, and welcome to the spooky season of Channel Pup content. This month we will be celebrating the twisted and occasionally spooky world of one of my all-time favourite filmmakers, and that is Tim Burton. In a series of videos where I will be discussing some of my favourite films by this particular director, starting with 1994's Ed Wood. And just a reminder, these videos are made possible by my supporters on this platform, so if you do want to support me, be sure to hit that big, beautiful subscribe button. And be sure to check out the Patreon link in the description below. Just a heads up, by the way, guys, YouTube's algorithm just wants me to make the same thing over and over and over again. That's how it works with most smaller creators anyway. So if you really enjoy these uh, videos that are out of the usual subjects and uh, you want to see a bit more like that, please do what YouTube won't and share it with those who might be interested. Thanks a bunch. So for those who don't know, Ed Wood was kind of the Tommy Wiseau of his time, which was the 1950s. He was known as the world's worst film director, and someone who would go on to amass a cult following who enjoyed his films for reasons beyond the conventional, often based upon ironic enjoyment or just kind of unintentional comedy, much like, for example, Tommy Wiseau's The Room. Ed Wood is an intriguing film to approach though, given that the story of the world's worst director is being told by one of the most beloved directors of our time, Tim Burton. However, Burton does not treat the legacy of Ed Wood as anything to be sneezed at, with the subject of the film's scorn not being Ed Wood, but more so Hollywood's dehumanizing treatment of actual human beings with very real lives and feelings. I think I first saw this film with my parents during my first year studying film at college. This was an obvious one for the family DVD collection, as my father was always fascinated by the world of Hollywood and film, and Edward's filmography wouldn't have preceded his time by too much of a margin. Also, my mother had a crush on Johnny Depp, so go figure. Naturally, given that I was a film student, this film was a good choice to show me given its subject matter and I do recall enjoying the film back then. However, watching it again nearly a decade later as an undergrad at university studying film, I have discovered that there's far more to this picture than an entertaining biopic. I just want to note, university and college are two different things in the UK, and um, there was quite a gap between me going to college and going to university, hence why it's almost a decade later. So, I absolutely love this film. It is not only a great film across the board with its smooth pacing, gorgeous visual language and engaging characterization, but it's a film very much made from one dreamer to another. It's very much Tim Burton's love letter to Ed Wood from director to director. It's also full of standout performances, with Johnny Depp as Ed Wood, Martin Landau playing Bella Lugosi, and Bill Murray as Bunny Beckenridge. These three for me were the standout performances in the film, but the film is full of absolutely fantastic performances. Can people please stop DMing me while I'm making videos please and thank you. It's also a film that is chock full of themes that really have aged well, all things considered. Themes of stigma, close-mindedness, prejudice, respect, acceptance, gender, and identity. One of the themes is how Edward made a positive impact with how his film enabled Bill Murray's Bunny Beckenridge character to finally embrace her true identity and attempt to go through with a physical transition in Mexico. For a film released in the 90s, the themes of gender identity are handled with dignity. There are characters in the film that do not understand or appreciate the queerness of Ed Wood and his uh, cross-dressing hobbies, but, but at no point does the film ridicule the queerness of Ed Wood. The film treats the characters like Ed Wood's disapproving wife Dolores as kind of the weird ones, for being kind of stuck up about it. In fact, there's a few key moments in here where, like, Ed Wood as a person, he embraces the weird and wonderful, or in other words, the queer. And yeah, there's a lot of moments that revolve around his dating life. Dolores, his ex-wife, does not approve of his queerness. She is far more conservative in her views, and she even goes so far as to yell at him and his 
his friends and storm off. But when Edward starts dating Kathy, who he'd go on to marry later in the film, they have far more in common and she accepts his cross-dressing and his queerness. She's a much better fit for Edward and a much more likeable character in this film. And when you think about it, Burton and Wood do have quite a bit in common, especially during the first parts of this film. Both Burton and Wood are creating films about stigmatized subject matters. Ed Wood was stigmatized in Hollywood as one of the worst filmmakers in history. At the start of the film, Ed Wood is working on Glenn or Glenda, a film about cross-dressing. At that time, a very stigmatized subject matter, but he does handle it with dignity. Where the producers see this weird creepy movie about some creep that wears women's clothes, Ed Wood wants to put his own story on screen and portray cross-dressing realistically and with credibility. And that's the thing, I'm, I mean, Tim Burton's a very respected filmmaker, so I'm sure this is a bit different, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that would have maybe scorned at Tim Burton for making a film about Ed Wood, for making a film that respectfully portrays what is considered to be the worst filmmaker in history. It's not some silly bumbling comedy or anything like that, it's a straight drama. Just as what Ed Wood wanted to make with Glenn or Glenda would be well, what he wanted to be a straight drama, as opposed to being this weird creepy ick flick, if you will. As a film student, and just as a dreamer in general, I can safely say, in many ways, we're all Edward. Edward is portrayed as genuine. He wants to please a crowd and portray his values on screen. He's truly invested in art more so than he is the profit or benefits like many of the people around him, like many of his peers and producers and people he answers to. And the film kind of does evoke a question, like I, I thought at one point while I was watching this, were Edward surrounded by peers who believed in him and treated him with a bit more dignity and respect, could Edward have evaded the stigma that he has today? Just food for thought. But Edward is also a flawed character in that his unbending desire to please his peers can result in poor judgement calls and hurting those closest to him, such as his wife Dolores, when he cast someone else in a role that was originally for her, simply because of stardom. I think there's also an argument to be made that Edward was maybe exploiting Bela Lugosi in his final days and his desire for work and relevancy. And that's kind of where dehumanization falls back into it as well. Edward truly believes in Bela Lugosi, like he's a big fan of him. But as far as Hollywood and producers are concerned, Bela Lugosi is this washed up relic of a bygone era. And just like that, a whole ass human being with a whole ass life is just irrelevant. But it is through Edward and his youthful spirit and his genuine love for the craft that Bela Lugosi kind of gets a spring back in his step. He kind of has a new lease on life as an actor and he loves it. And you know, like he loves being in the spotlight and working for Edward. So it's like, it's one of those things where it could be argued that Edward is exploiting him. But ultimately Bela Lugosi has no issues with that. And the dynamic between these two characters just comes off as well, it's it's very engaging and very heartfelt, and I absolutely loved Bela Lugosi in this film. It's two genuine, passionate filmmakers working together. What they're making might be crap, but it has a very humanizing perspective on these two characters, which it should. That is what makes this movie work. This is not a cynical look at Edward and Bela Lugosi. As far as Tim Burton films go, this one often gets overlooked, but it's easily one of the best servings that Tim Burton's filmography has to offer, and easily one of my favorite films of all time. Just for being such a heartfelt and carefully crafted portrayal of an otherwise incredibly stigmatized film icon. And why is it good Halloween viewing? This film covers the period from Glen or Glenda through Bride of the Monster through Plan 9 from Outer Space. Ed Wood was known for his creature features and B-movie horror. The film also features Bela Lugosi, a legendary actor famous for the early portrayals of Count Dracula, arguably the most iconic character in the history of horror. You can view the film on Disney Plus and I highly recommend you do so. It's a fantastic film and just an overlooked gem. So 
what do you guys think? If you enjoyed this video and you want to support more like it, be sure to hit that big, beautiful subscribe button. And of course, in the description below are links to different social media feeds, including the Patreon. If you're feeling extra generous like the following people, who are David 20 Covers, JK Strife, Marcus Ward, Cirrus the Skeptic, Biotin Arts, Mr. SP, Sergio, George is Lost, Legendary Ray Ray, Adam Myers, and Fayalan Schwarzenkrau. Thank you guys, you are the best of the best, but as for the rest of you, thank you so much for watching guys, and have a great day.